drill. Check, 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 check. Ah, okay. Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. This is April's Fix Your Project stream. Again, if you're unfamiliar, and I always preface this uh, every stream, if you're unfamiliar with this, essentially we do a stream every month uh, where I fix projects of your guys so you guys can send me your project files um, and I'll work on them on the stream. If you want to find out more information or how to submit to next month's stream, make sure to check out the link in the description below or to check out my Patreon. Um, so you can go and check out patreon.com slash Julian Gray. And if you pledge over $10, you're eligible to submit to these streams. These are first come, first serve. I work on the first like four or five projects every time. So uh, without any further ado, um, we're going to hop in and get started. I'm going to wait for some people to come into the chat. Uh, let me know that my audio is fine, guys. I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope you guys are nice and safe in quarantine. Um, while we do this, I'm going to download some of the projects of today, um, and you guys can ask me some questions. Um, downloading, downloaded the first two. I'm going to grab the third one. Still at work, when I get home, I can send it. Is there a cutoff? Um, yeah, so we actually, I take submissions before uh, streams, and then uh, I don't accept submissions while we stream usually. Sometimes I will, but uh, this time we're not, just because we have a long list of them today. Uh, next time though, however, you can submit your projects to me. Um, you can check that out on the, uh, you can check that out on the uh, Patreon page. Uh, somebody said some static on the mic. I think it was because my mic was overlapping my interface. Sometimes I get some weird interference when I do that. Um, downloading the project files. I think I know which one I'm downloading for this one. I'm not 100% sure. Jamie sent me this folder of projects, but I'm not sure which one it is. I'm just going to assume it's that one. So I'm downloading it. Tidris is here too. Tidris, you didn't send one in, did you? Um, no, not this one. Um, and then let me grab this one here. Again, like I said, we're going to do the first four or five. Generally, that's how these work. I always get like, you know, six or seven submissions. And, and that takes, if I spend like 25 minutes on each of them, um, it generally takes like, over you know a few hours so I don't want to I don't want to make these streams too long so I try to focus on maybe four or five okay so I'm downloading uh, the last few projects um, I think the mic has a loose connection I'll just try to fix that up here um, People said, do you need to be a patron to submit? Unfortunately, yes, I have to pay gate these because if I did it open to everyone, I used to do that and I and I got like thousands of submissions, like maybe not thousands, but like hundreds of submissions and it was impossible for me to do all that. So I had to put it behind the, the Patreon paywall and I thought it would be a good uh, perk of having a uh, pledge on the channel too. Um, so yeah, um, I hope you guys are all all good. I, I, I read in the chat that you guys are kind of struggling uh, financially. Really sorry to hear that. It's kind of been difficult on us musicians as well. We can't tour right now. Um, downloading the last of the projects and then we're gonna get started here. Um, we only have, I think four today. Four and then a link, so yeah. You like my beard? <laughs> um, my camera's bouncing up and down a bit. That's interesting. Okay. I think it's whenever I move my legs or, or like move my desk at all, it's not really a super stable desk. Um, it does that, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to drag this in. And, guys, if you submit to these projects, uh, please do... Uh, uh, 
submit with your name attached to it. I don't know what like project 18 or what have you is. It's, it's kind of a, uh, it's hard for me to tell. Okay, so I'm just labeling these and then we're gonna get started. Okay, this is um, open project 18. Okay, that's Seamus. Okay. Twitter gang, where you at? Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, how, how you doing, Julian? Still playing Animal Crossing? Yes, every day. It's a problem. Okay, so Seamus. Sorry, I didn't uh, have the time to do this ahead of the stream like usual. Um, I have to do this really quickly right now. Um, one more project to download. I think it's this one. He sent me this folder. He didn't send me the the correct like single project link. So I'm just going to download one of the many projects in here and uh, we should be able to do that. Um, also, uh, if Jamie's in the chat, make sure to collect all and save and put it in a uh, put it in a uh, zip file too. It, me zipping the folder live takes forever um, and it might it might not be able to do it. Sometimes Google Drive has an issue with that. Okay, so I've downloaded three of the projects. I think we're just going to start from here um, and then we'll go from there. So I'm downloading this last one, see if I can get it to go. And yeah, so how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are having a safe and you know, healthy time in quarantine. Okay, there we go. Okay, four projects, let's do this. All right, so let's switch over to my uh, camera. And now we are in Ableton Live, as you can see here. I'm gonna collapse OBS and we're gonna get started. Um, the order of these projects I, sum I got submitted was Mark first, so we're going to go ahead and open up his first. Mark Eldon Dreamscape. And yeah, and for future reference, guys, if you ever want to, um, if you ever want to submit a project file uh, in one of these, please put your name in the project file, collect all and save, and make sure to freeze, make sure to freeze all of your third-party plugins that are obscure. For example, VPS Avenger 64-bit. Um, and then after you've frozen them, collect all and save, so all of those frozen samples are copied into the project, then go ahead and zip the project folder and send me that. Do not send me like an ALS file or, or a unzipped folder. It takes forever to download. Okay, Mark is one of my students. Um, he's enrolled in my mentorship program, so I'm excited to hear this. Um, he's kind of newer to production, but he has a little bit of background, so um, should be pretty good. Let's go ahead and give this thing a spin. Somebody pointed out, no desktop audio, it seems. Sorry, um, totally forgot to turn up my desktop audio. Here you go, from the top. Uh, let's do this again. Obvious. 
is better than T. T makes me nauseous. Love with that lead. Very like trance. Okay, let's take a look at some of these elements here. First and foremost, there's a little bit of harmonic tension in this, this verse section here. The bass isn't quite working with the main melody and the chords. So let me see if I can figure out what sound that is and we'll try to address it. You hear that It should be a different note there. It's almost as droning through. Right there. He's changing his chords, but he's not changing his bass, and it's kind of bothering me. This this sounds really good, right? Yeah. Um, so this is a traditional chord progression here, but his bass is not following that. And if you listen to this, you, he has a conflict of harmony here. Uh, first note works because that's the one; it's the root. The second note does not. The bass is not sitting in that chord correctly. You know how tense that sounds? That one's a little bit better, but it's still not quite right. And neither is that one. So let's go ahead and see if we can find that bass sound that he's using. And it looks to be this one. And what I'm gonna do is just go in and try to compare this to the MIDI of the of the pad that he has here. So what I'll do is I'll color this something really obvious like pink and I'll actually just do this. Highlight both at the same time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to follow the root notes here of the chords with our bass line. So if you look at the, the pink channel, our first note, even though the MIDI is up high, um, is an A. And our root note of our first chord is A. But you'll notice that what's creating that harmonic tension is he's using the fifth as the, or I don't even know if that is the fifth. He's using this this top note of the chord. Uh, where is that? Okay, it's the minor third. As uh, maybe it's the major. He's using that instead of using the root of the the chord. So if we if we actually transpose this down to an F it's gonna harmonize better with that F in the chord because it's the bottom voice. It's the core of the chord. And then for this guy, the C works because 
like I said before, um, the third chord is good, and then the fourth chord is not quite right either because we're going to A instead of G. So let's go ahead and bring that down to a G. And let's hear the bass with the chords now, and I think it's going to work much better. Okay, let's compare that to what we had before, which is this. Let me go ahead and just shift these over. So yeah, this, this has less tension. And it feels correct in the chord. Okay, so that's good. Uh, this EQ is a bit much. Somebody pointed out in the comment section. Um, one of the, the real key principles of EQ that really changed my perspective of EQ is the fact that um, the curve is what matters. It's not where the, the, the nodes are necessarily placed. So, for example, if we recreate this curve essentially uh, at neutral volume, like at zero, something like this, maybe around here, I think it's like around there actually, and then he has like a small boost around here, maybe like that. Granted, this is still pretty aggressive. Um, let's see. Let's just do something like that, maybe. That's kind of similar, right? This curve looks a lot less um, aggressive than this because of how high this is. But it's actually doing the exact same thing. So if, if you actually look at the, uh, the curve itself, you can see that this pattern here is the same as this pattern here. The only difference is that you're adding six decibels or what have you of volume. So um, a good way to uh, explain this and a, a very obvious way, I think, is if, uh, let me just for an example, take an EQ. And if we did a curve like this, as you can see, we're actually cutting the top end off, right? Um, but this curve is actually identical to this curve here. The only difference is that this curve is plus six in the base. And this curve is zero at the high end, whereas this one is um, negative six at the top and zero at the low end. So the actual difference between these curves is sonically completely the same. It's just that this one here, oops, this one here is gonna sound louder. Um, so the perception of EQ like this, and when people and starter musicians start to boost everything up, what you're actually doing is just turning the entire track up. So instead of doing your EQ like this, based on this example here, we can have a curve like this, which is looks much more subtle and you're not doing as much of a, uh, a gain adjustment. Um, and then instead of, uh, instead of doing it so high, you can just boost the gain here by six and you'll be doing the exact same thing as this. Uh, by the same token, if we actually reduce this by negative six, this curve is exactly the same as this. Um, and that's just the fundamental uh, property of EQ. So when you see a curve like this, it's actually not that bad. What's actually more bad is if you do something along these lines. Um, if everything's flat and then there's one like super resonant frequency or something like this, then these particular resonant notes are gonna be like plus six and everything else is not. That's, that's actually far worse than having a curve like this. Um, just turned up six decibels. So yeah, so that's... Uh, that's a uh, fundamental property of EQ that I think you should know because it is, it is, uh, um, it's just how EQ works and people don't realize that. So I'll just leave it as it is. Maybe I'll turn it down a little bit. Um, and yeah, we can start uh, listening for these again. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, replace that other bass with that chord there. I'll do the same for these ones. I think that harmonizes a lot better with the chords. And then we'll go one by one here and start bringing things in. I think these chords are a little bit too quiet relative to the bass. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight these three and turn them up maybe like three, four decibels like that. sounding good let's go ahead and throw this arp in i don't know what this sounds like but um, i'm just trying to bring in the melodic elements one by one here to get this mix sounding a little bit better and making sure the harmonies work it doesn't sound exactly in key but it's such a twinkly sound that i don't know that it matters to be much louder that needs to be like the focus of the song so I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the ARP layers I'm actually gonna group these together um, so we can handle them as one big piece instead of uh, separate ones we'll do ARP and I'm actually going to turn these up um, within the the group itself and maybe turn the group down just a little bit like that that bass and sub in. I think also the bass needs to come up a little bit relative to everything else too. While this sounds good here, I think um, this needs a little bit of low end to it too. So I'll keep this bass going through. Maybe I'll get rid of some of the embellishments. Just go for like a solid chord and then maybe filter some of it out like this for this part. a little bit crushed to me let me go ahead and take a look at what you're doing with the OTT okay that's like a support art so that's the big like trance one I'm just gonna turn the depth down on the OTT I think it's gonna let a lot of the the dry signal through and it's gonna make it sound a lot better turn it down like a lot and then we can turn it up here. Turn the dry wet on that delay down a lot too. It's kind of distracting. It's taking away from that predominant voice. Neutralize these output gains on this compressor. It's a little too loud. Turn down the OTT a bit and turn this up. Turn down the support one and turn up the group. That's sounding awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to this in the context of the mix now.
So I believe these pads are having a similar issue that the base was having. They weren't quite working with the cords. So I'm just going to go ahead and compare these to the, the base pad as well. Um, and then we can, we can make sure that everything is working correctly. I can tell that this one's not right because it's the same note as um, the previous, which is not what we were going for. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight these two together. And maybe we'll throw the cord in there too. I'm going to color these like a different color so they're a little bit easier to differentiate. Maybe like a green. Like that. And then we'll go ahead and compare our MIDI here. So... Okay, I don't think this is the element I was thinking of. There's, there's another one in there that's not quite right. This one sounds okay. It sounds more like a counter melody. accentuate the high one more. There's another element in here that's not quite right. It might be this one. Yeah, that one. Let's take that up and compare that to the bass because I think we need to make the motion of that bass follow this chord here. Um, even back in this part as well, um, it's just a harsh... Um, clashing of notes in the chord. So I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll compare these two together just so we can see what's up. So we'll go A, F, C, and then G. And just shorten this up. Could just press legato. Um, that's because we have two, com two highlighted. We can't, but if you do legato here, that'll just do that. Okay. Cool, so we have the the basis correct now. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this with the envelope lock on so we don't overwrite automation. I'm just gonna copy these over these. And wherever we see this, I'm just gonna copy it over like that. And I think that now we're gonna have a much more harmonic and uh, you know good sounding thingo dingo. <laughs> how much more together the entire arrangement sounds now that we fit all the pieces together harmonically. Um, all of those chord uh, errors were really weighing down the arrangement and now all of that is resolved and the listener can focus on the elements that are important. <laughs> One final adjustment I would I'd like to suggest is you kind of go from this verse into a like fake drop kind of thing and I feel like it's unnecessary because this drop is so similar to this one. Maybe if you just cut it out entirely like that and go straight from this verse into a verse build. I also think that it's a little bit weird to lead your um, melody on that note. It's it's not an expected note there. Da, da. Um, if we were to just take this up to the uh, uh, like the the root or the fifth, I think it would sound a lot better in the progression. I can't do it here. If we actually just did this momentarily. Of course, it's a harmony, so it might not work. Um, it's a, it's a, the note is not a single voice; it's multiple. But um, yeah, uh, I would I would try to go for that 
that one or five here instead of using like whatever that is. I think it might be a three. See how much more satisfying it is to have the one lead. I don't agree with using like the 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 one on every single measure like this. Um, now that we've transposed that like three or whatever it was up to the the one or five, um, we we can't. Uh, Obviously, this this MIDI note is that note, but I actually liked where the other ones were sitting um, in there. I just want to change that one. So if you're watching this back, I suggest kind of messing around with that. Let's go ahead and give this first part a full listen through again. I would really like to dive into this 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 section here because it screams like synth wave, cool like drop kind of feeling. But um, I think we spent enough time on this already. Uh, well, we got to move on to the next one. Let's play this through and. On to the next. So that's that. Um, not perfect yet, but definitely a lot of that, that the chord progression stuff that was giving me issue um, is now resolved. And I would encourage you to keep working on this one. This is really cool. That lead is so awesome. I wish I wrote that, to be honest. It's, it's very good. Uh, let me collect all and save this guy. And we're going to move on to the next project of the day which is, let's take a look at who is next, John Davis or Fresco Baldi. Um, go ahead and zip that one up, compress, um, and we'll open up Fresco's. Virtual self should collab with Porter Robinson. Wow, nice, that was so clever. I think he was leading with the fourth there. Yeah, it's just a weird interval to start your melody on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, it's either the third or the fourth. I'm, I, I can't differentiate the two without playing it, but yeah. Okay, so let's give Fresco Baldi's a listen. And um, yeah, here we go. I know we've heard this on previous streams, I think, man. But I'm down to listen again. This one was so good.
Oh, Fresco did send a different one. Interesting. Well, he sent a different one. I accidentally downloaded the wrong one, I think. Um, hopefully, I didn't do that for all of them. I don't think I did. I, I think it was just his. Because if, if you actually look at the... Uh, the submissions here, Mark and, and Fresco submitted first and second almost every time. Like these were the or, the these were the uh, the previous ones. Um, so so I think I, I I saw that and I accidentally downloaded the old one. But yeah, that dude, that that track is so good, man. The um, the alteration tips or whatever. Um, I, that's probably not the title, but it's super good. Have you ever play Lego Island? Uh, that's what it really reminds me of, and it's one of my favorite games when I was a kid. Let 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 Lego. Let 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 Lego. While we download this, um, I'm gonna go ahead and tackle this one. Um, one of my students is in, or one of our submissions for today, I guess, is in FL Studio, so he couldn't uh, submit a uh, he couldn't submit a project but he sent me a link to his track, Jupiter, and we're just gonna give it a quick listen, um, and then I'll give you some thoughts on it, and uh, I'll go ahead and then hop into the Fresco Baldi tune. Uh, you should check out the music from uh, Lego Island Fresco if you haven't. It's, it's like a really like cult classic game from like the 90s. A lot of us grew up on it here, and it gives me that impression for sure. All right, here's Jupiter by Peach T, and we'll listen to it quickly. My first impression is that the kick could be stronger in the low end. I suggest trying to layer in like a sub kick under there or a synth doing a dive, like a oof. Somebody said, how can I submit my track? There's a link to the Patreon post in the description below. And when you pledge to the channel, there's a link you can submit. Oh, man. This is so good already. Okay, another note I have, um, in addition to that kick being kind of weak, I would try to, uh, I would try to uh, use a little bit wider of a bass. Try like a Reese bass with some unison, so you can have some more stereo with. It sounds a little bit mono to me here, and it's kind of lackluster. Um, that's how I get my basses in like um, Cold Outside and tracks like that. Um, it's just a saw wave with like eight or nine voices and it's low past. Um, you just need some width there. You don't want to do your sub uh, stereo, but like your low mid, um, it's really important. Somebody said, can you submit remixes or just originals? You can submit um, remixes as long as they don't have a like identifiable vocal because otherwise they'll get claimed copyright. Oh, that melody's great. I think with a slightly stronger bass and kick, this would be like a banger, man. If that's a analog bass, you can try adding like a little bit of chorus to your your uh, upper mid um, in a multi-band format. So like you want to separate your channels out so your sub is in mono and then you have your, your low mid and your, your mids in a separate channel. If you're using Ableton, it's really easy. I don't know how to do that in your previous DAW. I don't know what you're using. 
but um you can take in ableton you can take two separate chains and you can route uh one through a low pass with a four um i think de four decibel per octave drop or whatever um and or 12 decibel per octave drop i forget the exact terminology but the four x in ableton you just carve off like at like 100 hertz and then the other one carve up from like 100 and then add some uh, chorus or something to that bass to widen it up a bit if you're using a soft synth it's very easy to just add some unison this is super good Super good. Man, I wish this was in Ableton. I'd love to work on this one. This is like right up my alley. There's like some like five or six minor adjustments I would make that would bring this like into the into the light, I guess. <laughs> it, it would it would brighten it up and it would make it such a stronger track. This is so good though. Remind me to follow him after the stream, guys. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and load in this Fresco track, the correct one this time. Um, and yeah, we'll just do that. So yeah, I was wondering, I was like, why did you send me the same one? But some of my students actually do send me the same project file. Um, so it's not like uncommon for me to get, you know, multiple of them. Okay, there we go, Fresco Baldi. Let's go ahead and load this up. Okay, don't save. Great job, um, uh, Peach Tea, that's awesome. Really cool tune. It sounds a lot like Silk Music and uh, all of those older guys like Shingo Nakamura, um, Nigel Good, of course Dead Mouse, but I don't have your your wave license. I don't know. I I, I think I have the license because waves uh, guys are friends of mine, so they they gave me their whole bundle. I just haven't activated it. So next time, if you send me a project, I can go. Cool. Elusive urge stream eventide sunrise by Julian Gray now on Spotify. Thank you for sharing that. Helps a lot. All right, let's check out this fresco tune, the second one. Um, the other one was the accidentally me opening the last projects one. All right, let's go check this out. Interesting. Okay, I'm just now getting the groove. That's interesting. That is a weird groove, man, but I, I like it. Willow Dillon says, hi. Hi, Willow.
This is some forward thinking stuff, man. Robbie, hey! Hi there. Roby? into like indie dance territory with this one it doesn't feel like edm anymore and i i really really like that um you should check out an artist called baths like you take a bath like baths um you would really enjoy their song miasma sky miasma sky um kind of reminds me of that sonically um most of my critiques on this one um reside in the mixing realm um i don't have a lot of production and arrangement tips because i think you're trying to you're trying to be different and i don't want to i don't want to steer this in a more pop uh way so i'm not going to touch your arrangement at all i think it's pretty solid um one note i had was i couldn't grasp the rhythm for the first like eight bars it was very tricky to find um, and even when I got it, it was it was a little bit difficult to figure out until maybe like bar 17. So um, I don't know if that was intentional, um, in which case you're doing a great job. But um, I couldn't grasp that rhythm until a little bit later into the song. Yeah, baths. Um, if I was to, I'll just show you really quick. I'm not gonna play it because YouTube copyright. All this is missing to me is like a a vocal over it or something like Radiohead esque. This song right here, I think you would like this a lot. To be honest, all of his music, but that particular song I think is right up your alley. turn your kick up a little bit uh, one of the things that stood out to me is that the bass is a little bit too loud Let's turn that down a little bit and I'm actually gonna group this um, and add in a bit of side chain it seems like you've done it uh, manually with a utility I'm just gonna add in a little bit more with a compressor I think um, there needs to be a little bit longer of a release on that cut so Let's go ahead and listen for the click of the, the kick. Make it a pretty aggressive side chain. Make it instantaneous and we'll add a little bit more release time. It adds a little bit more pump and then we can hear that in the mix. some on that sub too. And on that main top lead, I don't know where that is. Those are top drums. Um, I think that could be a little bit brighter. It'll help it punch through a little bit more. So brightness is is how we perceive like things being close to us. And I think you have a little bit too much delay on this. Um, I'd probably dry it out a little bit. I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. Um, that's also perceived as 
you know, within our uh, realm of reach, I guess. Like if you if you hear something very loud, it's either it's either really far and loud and low, or it's high pitched and it's close and you know relatively loud. Um, if you have a high pitched sound that sounds quiet, it's kind of subconsciously wrong because in nature that doesn't happen. You don't hear something high pitched from you know a hundred feet away. It kind of rolls off the top. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, for this guy, I'm going to add a little bit of EQ. And also, guys, a short tip. This is something that most people don't know about live. If You can actually rank your plugins uh, by different characteristics uh, vertically. I like to use rank, which is um, essentially what you use most gets pushed to the top, and what you use least gets pushed to the bottom. It makes finding your EQ and you know your really common ones uh, easy to get to. Um, EQ is by far my most used, and then filter and compressor, delay, utility, etc. You can kind of guess. <laughs> um, I'm just going to give this a little bump in the top end. I think it's going to help it push through a little bit more. Let's hear that in the track. like the saturator. Let's check what you have in ozone. It's also very quiet here. So I'm just gonna push this up. I like to rely on like a mastering limiter like ozone to do my heavy lifting. I don't wanna do most of my li limiting with the Ableton one, it's just kind of um, not the greatest limiter for transparency. Um, somebody said in the chat, let's let's see. Uh, so your sidechain is only occurring about 2000 hertz. Um, now it's a filter, just affects the sidechain signal path coming and as a trigger. Yeah, so um, this is a common question of why I put this EQ here. If you're familiar with how an EQ works, or I'm sorry, Okay, EQ. Uh, compressor works uh, essentially, or at least a sidechain compressor. Um, whenever it's hearing a signal from the sidechain input, it's going to reduce your sidechained element to the amount you set. So if you set this to zero, for the sake of ease of explanation, whenever it hears anything on the kick channel above zero decibels or infinite to one, so like, or infinite decibels, um, it's going to reduce the, the, the element you have the compressor on to that zero. And that's like a full cut to silence, right? And then it, redu it comes back up um, based on your release time and it activates based on your attack time. Your ratio is like a valve, so it's like how much is actually getting reduced. If you have infinity to one, it means every decibel that comes out is gonna be reduced to one, which is in this case zero or like silence. If we dial this back to like 4-1, um, for every 4 decibels that comes in, we're going to reduce it to 1 and etc. So a softer curve means less cut. Um, but the reason why we use an EQ here is because if we did it from the kick, if you'll notice your kick is quite long, right? You have, well your kick's actually pretty short, but a lot of the times you'll have a kick that, that resonates out like maybe this long, like to a full like quarter or, um, you know, some cases you know, dotted eighth or something, length. And when you have a kick this long, uh, that subtail in some genres will act as a sidechain trigger. So if you have your, your trigger set like this, where anything at all is triggering your sidechain, the entirety of that base tail is triggering the sidechain too. So in, to, to circumvent that, we use an EQ to listen for anything above 2K. And if you're familiar with how a kick is synthesized or recorded, you have a really high pitch at the beginning. You have like a, 
and then it dives down um, in pitch as it goes. So it's like, ew. Um, and generally, it's an exponential curve, so you have higher pitch for a short amount of time, and then it dives down. So it's like, ew, 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 ew. <laughs> and, and what we're trying to latch onto is that high pitch section. So by adding in this EQ, it's saying whatever we hear from the kick channel above 2K, which is probably like this section here, um, for that long, we're going to cut to zero. Um, and that's essentially what this curve is saying. So I hope that makes sense. That's how um, that's how I use a compressor like that. Uh, if you're if you're kind of lost based on that explanation, you can check out my video on compressors. And if you still don't understand, um, you can always use a workaround like a LFO tool, which is essentially drawing what this is doing so like this particular curve here is something along these lines um maybe the release is a little bit longer it's like 92 milliseconds it's kind of like over here somewhere but um you could use an lfo tool too if you don't understand how compressors work so yeah that's how it works yes yeah, so the eq is actually only listening for this little clip right here and what that's doing is it's it's exactly what you said it's it's an issue of timing so we're trying to get a trigger that's shorter if that makes sense i'll have to do a full video on this and explaining why you use the eq in that way um with a diagram or something so you can actually see uh how this makes sense okay so we have our side chain we added a little bit of crispness to that lead a little bit loud and I think you could probably do for some supporting elements in your in your bass note instead of holding through the same notes as your lead I think that could be really cool I'm trying to find it right now. I think it's this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and unfreeze this for a second. I don't have all your plugins, but um, I think this is gonna make a big difference. So I'm just gonna try this for a second. Let's try like harmonizing a bit instead of just using the root net. Instead of going there, maybe we'll go to the that one. Something like that, make it a little more interesting. So adding some harmonic elements to this, I think could make this a lot more interesting. I would mess with it a bit. Um, 
Let me try this. Let's, let's unfreeze your sub really quick and see how that sounds in the context of the track. So it adds a lot of like uh, flair to it. It doesn't sound as like the bass and the lead are doing the same note. Something like that. I don't know. Worth a shot. I don't want to change your arrangement too much, but I think adding a harmony there could be more interesting than just holding your same note. But again, you can mess with it. I think that's all I'm gonna do to this guy. There's not too much I would change as far as writing goes. Maybe experiment with the idea of harmonizing your bass instead of just playing the the same note as your lead. Pretty cool. Um, and the mix is not too bad either, I think. The minor adjustments we did make sound good. Uh, maybe a little bit of high-end EQ on the the hi-hats or the the top group I guess maybe something like this high favoring I'm not like totally sold on this, but um, you can mess around with it. Cool, let's move on to the next one. Um, we've done, I think, three so far. Let's go on to the next boy. Okay, next up we have uh, this one by Jamie. I think this is the right project file. Again, he sent me like a weird link. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see if this works. This is weird. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have the sample in there. I'm not sure how I can listen to this. Uh, next time, dude, send me the... Please send me the uh, SoundCloud link. If you're in the chat, send me the SoundCloud link, and I'll try to... I'll try to... I'll just play it, because um, it seems like that's what you've done. Um, but unfortunately, the sample is not included in the project file, so... Um, I'm not sure if I downloaded the right one even. You kind of sent me a folder of many. Um, so send me a project file or send me a um, SoundCloud link and I'll give you feedback on it directly. Okay, can't work on that one. Let's go to the Seamus one. I'm going to go ahead and free, uh, compress that one. And go ahead and open this up. So that was submitted today. Had no idea you did these. We'll have to prepare for something for next time. Love the music, Julian. Thank you, Alan. Means a lot. So we said, how can I send in one for free? Unfortunately, we have to, I had to put a paywall on this because I used to do streams like this for free, but I got so many submissions it would take, 
I, I could never get through them all. So I, I felt um, I would make this a benefit of my Patreon pledge, pledges instead of doing it open just because it's, um, A, we're working on your track for a while, so it's kind of like a good value. And B, um, there's just like too many of them if I open it to public, so. All right, uh, we have Project 18 by Seamus. I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a play. And as I do that, I'm gonna download the last project, which is Crohn's, Crone, however you pronounce it. Go ahead, uh, let's go ahead and play. Oh, nice, that's awesome already. Oh, I already have the link open. One twenty eight. That feels faster than that. Maybe I've just been slowing down right lately. <laughs> I think your pads are just a little bit too um, dissonant, like something's up with the, the chord structure. We can work on that in a moment. Breakdown's a little long. I'm gonna go ahead and label your arrangement here. It's a little too long. Yeah, your pads are not in the same key as the rest of the song. Um, we're gonna address that in a moment. You see how long um, the draw the breakdown is relative to relative to the drops um i would try to balance that a little bit better i would probably cut this in half probably just chop eight bars out of the center here you probably don't need all of that um maybe like that because it seems like you're doing something here let's just see if this works <laughs> Actually, let's do this. Okay. 
doesn't hurt the arrangement at all and it kind of shortens it up and makes it feel better. That sub is way too quiet. Turn that way up. And you need a you need a low mid bass too. I'm actually gonna try to layer in one here. I'll unfreeze serum. Um, by the way, guys, if you ever do submit to these, I, you don't have to freeze serum unless it's like a CPU hog. Uh, generally, I'm I'm okay with serum. So this is way too low. Let's add in a a saw in the mids and let's try to like spread it out pick an odd voicing so we have one in the center and we'll just do this see how much better that sounds like more full and then if you're gonna do this sub there's actually no reason to cut at the bottom because it's where their sub is anyway so I suggest not doing that We're basically making a Reese base now. And let's try to hear that with the pads and see if we can isolate some of the issues I'm having with these pads. Pad cord. It's right now it's not quite right. What is that? Silent? Spire. Yeah, I don't know, spire. Let's use a serum for now. And isolate what's going on here that's making this weird um, split it into its own clip double click and I'll do that for both of these like that oops like that and we can see what's what's going on here so first of all I'm gonna get rid of any disabled notes and we're just gonna fix up this chord so C sharp is our root note then E then F I want the root of your chords to always follow the root. C sharp, E, D sharp. Okay, that's correct. Then we can go ahead and add our, our minor uh, third or fourth uh, for major. Three. Okay, something's wrong with this chord. I'm just gonna disable this A for now. Because we know the C sharp is in key, and we know the E is our our minor third. We uh, to complete our triad, all we'd have to do is add our fifth, which is the the G sharp. And these are pretty close. Once we get rid of the A, which is like a sharp six, <laughs> um, it's it's uh, the six is not working here. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, maybe we can move it up to an A sharp. Or B. B is our suspended note. I think it's a seventh. No, it's not suspended. It's a seventh. And we can hold that G through because that's the two, three, four, major fourth of the E major chord. And the A sharp is our major fourth of the F sharp major chord, plus the octave F sharp. So if we actually just slim this down to triads like this, that's the basis of the chords. And I think this is what's going to sound good. We can invert this one to make it a little more interesting. Let's add an G sharp here in our on our E as well. So now we have a C. Uh, I'm sorry, a C sharp uh, suspended four plus octave C sharp. Sorry if I'm like music theorying out right now, but um, it's important to understand. I actually don't want that sus or that seven in there. The F sharp with the sus4 is a bit weird too. I 
don't know if that's what we're going for here, but... Yeah. And you see how discordant this one sounds now relative to that? So, I think that fixes it up very nicely. It's, it's kind of like... Um, flashy like it's not quite the vibe of the song but um, at least it works better in the song context I'm just trying to show you the importance of getting your melodies to be in key uh, because if they're not in key you're gonna be mixing and you're not gonna know why things don't sound right it's actually just your writing okay so um, let's go ahead and spread this out a bit more I can't fake your sound necessarily Just add like a lot of noise to it. And like a OTT essentially. I think that's what's effectively creating that sound. Mix down a little bit. Gain up a bit. It's got some really ethereal reverb on there too. I'm just gonna use the built-in uh, serum. And you can always just plug this MIDI back into your other one, but I think that it's gonna flow better with the rest of the song now. like a little bit of Same deal with this one. I would try to layer in some new chords there too. It's a bit discordant. I'm just gonna disable that for now. chord's not quite right there either. I suggest just brushing up on your music theory a bit. Um, a lot of this is just chordal issues. Um, the writing is cool. The, the drums are awesome and the, the bass line's sick. Um, it's just getting the, the chords to sit right with that. Um, let's hear this arp against it. Yeah, this one has some issues too. Um, again, I would try to just isolate some of those and fix them. Um, make sure that all of your chords are moving together um, and you're not, you don't have any like dissonant chords. Uh, that's my biggest uh, takeaway from this one and my biggest uh, tip on this guy. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. The melody and the bass are cool. It's just that you have to make sure that all of your, your elements are in key with one another double check your music theory there um and uh yeah let's check the piano somebody said the piano sounds out of key yeah there's definitely some notes in there too so that a is not correct it should be a c or g sharp
just look up the key of C sharp minor and um, write relative to that key. I think I think that will help you isolate a lot of these issues and don't use any notes that aren't in the key. Yeah, that ARP is definitely not in key. Um, I would work on that and then check out your pluck as well. Actually, your pluck's fine. And Tidris said um, in the chat, something that helps him is putting all of the notes that are in the key um, in the MIDI and then fold. You can actually do that very easily by, if you were to just move all this stuff over just a little bit, set your playhead to here, disable loop, drag the loop out, and then you just drew in the notes of C sharp. So C sharp, Something like that, yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, and then, then you can press fold and only the notes that are in the scale will appear on your MIDI. So you can try that. I don't know if that was a perfect C sharp though, so I wouldn't use that one, but um, yeah. C mixolydian, C sharp mixolydian? Maybe try this pad an octave down too. That could be really nice. Yeah, it probably wasn't C sharp minor. I'm just I'm just an idiot. Um, just trying to show the. Uh, I don't know where that MIDI clip went. Yeah, I'm just trying to show the the premise of using it and then folding it. I'm not the biggest like. I'm not super uh, music theory. Uh, I'm I'm pretty. I know my stuff for the most part, but there's some things I just don't have memorized, and that's like scales. Um, somebody said C sharp harmonic minor. Okay, nice. Well, there you go. Yeah, I couldn't tell you that. Very cool, like old electro vibes. Um, my other note, maybe turn the bass up just a little bit. The bass line sounds awesome. The, the chords are just kind of off. Cool, so um, yeah, I think before I work on this one anymore, I think it'd be best if you went and fixed some of the harmonic problems. Unfortunately, I would do it, but I can't enter your synths. Um, so maybe copy this MIDI over to this one. Um, work on your ARP. Make sure all of your notes are within the key, um, C sharp. 
and uh, yeah, and then we can go from there on the next video or what have you. Okay, so uh, that's sounding good. Collect all and save. Um, and then we're going to move on to our last project of today, which is Krons. Take a few minutes to look at that. And um, yeah, then we'll wrap things up. Desktop, uh, fix your project. Oh, I didn't copy it in yet, one second. So I downloaded it, I just gotta copy it in. Give me two seconds. While I'm here, uh, do you guys want to uh, ask me any questions? You can. Do you do music feedback without the project in today's stream? Um, if you are a patron and that's the way you want me to review your project, I can definitely uh, I can definitely check it out. Um, SoundCloud links or like Google Drive is best, I think. date added today gotta make sure it's the right one um, apologies about this I'm just trying to figure out where the project is um, yeah how are you guys doing today are you guys having a good day so far you guys safe in quarantine you guys like my beard <laughs> Wayne R, I just want to thank you for what you do. Your melodic techno tutorial learned me so much and inspired me to delve more into building my own sounds with synths. Thank you, man, and I, I really appreciate comments like this. It, it um, means a lot to me when, when people reach out and tell me that my tutorials help them express their creative vision. I think it's very special to me. Where did that project go? Uh, Kron, if you're in the chat, what is your project file called? <laughs> I know I just downloaded it. I guess I can just re-download it. Oh, okay, it's space time. There we go. Really cool project, Seamus. I really like that bass line a lot. Very, like, uh, old school electro kind of sound. All right, um, we're opening Cron Space Time, and this is the last one of the day. And yeah, if you guys, if you guys ever want to submit to these in the future, unfortunately, I I, I do these ahead of time. So if you want to submit, you have to submit in the days previous to the stream. Um, I announce them on Twitter, and then I I set the link up there. Um, make sure to pledge uh, on Patreon um, on my my second tier uh, that gives you access to these streams and um, your ability to submit to them I've, I've said it before in this stream the only reason why we do this paywall is because if I do it open to everyone I get a thousand submissions and I didn't want to do like a SoundCloud link like feedback stream because I think it's a little bit more in-depth and a little bit more engaging to other viewers if we go inside the project and I show you how I would adjust your projects then to just you know listen to us on SoundCloud and be like this is what I would change so okay let's go ahead and check out Cron space time and then we're going to work on it for a bit and then wrap things up let's go ahead and check it out Melody.
Yeah, this is awesome. Bad Valhalla. Awesome. This is awesome, dude. So if you guys are longtime viewers of the the channel and you've seen previous streams, um, you've probably heard some of his stuff. I think this is one of the best ones you've sent me so far, dude. Um, really, really followable melodies and um, it's very easy to listen to and the listener can latch on very well. I think the arrangement's awesome too. Um, I think the main issues I'm having with it are sound selection and sound design. Um, it's definitely an improvement from the last one, um, but there's a few things I would change. I think a lot of your sounds uh, sound kind of similar, like you're changing sounds, but a lot of them have a similar uh, sonic quality to them. So they don't like, it doesn't feel like they're changing that very, that much. So let's go ahead and give us another listen and, and I'll, I'll try to find things that I would personally adjust and um, maybe adjust the sound design of i think for the most part the um the writing is good on this one it sounds great and where you've placed things arrangement wise sound good um it's just more of the sound design and sound selection um one of my biggest uh initial thoughts was that the drums are too quiet notably the kick drum i thought the kick was really quiet so i'm just going to go ahead and turn up your drum group as a whole uh, a few decibels and see how that sounds and then if that doesn't sound quite right then we can turn down the other elements but I think the kick needs to be a little louder let's hear when the other stuff comes in yeah it sounds a little bit loud So for example, this sounds a little bit like cheesy to me. Let's try to like... See, you had a filter, but you removed it. I think it's a little too aggressive right now. Turn the filter off and just. She liked the filter. I'm not super big on the filter movement. Just um, really quick. I'm just gonna. Hmm, I don't want to delete it because you might like it. I'll just duplicate it and then I'll remove it on the top one and just leave this soloed. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that. Just wanna kind of set a value and forget it. Yeah. Soft clips a bit much on there. Turn it up a bit. I don't know. 
something softer like that could be interesting. Maybe some delay or something. Some reverb. Then we can open up a little bit more. Something a little bit more soothing than the triangle it was before, or the, the square it was before. I think it sounded like this before. That's before I... It's a little bit harsh. I just kind of want to cool it off a bit. There's an awful lot of low end to this too. There's that. Uh, I'm just gonna do ahead do this. is pretty impeccable. Maybe I'll put like a compressor on the group. Sum them a bit. Um, but other than that, it sounds great. that other lead a bit more. Maybe some like filter mod now that we've established a better sound, like more something like this. cool um and then let's go ahead and take a look at the other ones this has an awful lot of high information i want to touch your filter A, it's a kind of a nice high if we added some verb to it like it's just a little bit harsh right now lose the distortion Let's try this. 
Pretty nice. Just getting these sounds to play nicely together, I think is going to be super impactful to the rest of your song. Something softer, maybe like I also I never like to modulate my filter because then I can't make a gut adjustment to it. I have the same reason why I don't like to automate my um my uh, volumes on my channels because I, I want to be able to just drag this down because I know that's exactly what I want and without having to just you know move all this around. It gets very cumbersome doing that. Yeah, always use a macro to control these. Never automate like directly because otherwise you're gonna run into this where I want to adjust this slightly um, and I don't wanna have to redo the entire automation. Uh, so always try to use a macro to control these. Uh, otherwise you're gonna be limiting your like subconscious ability to change your sound design. Considered like <laughs> that doesn't work. Maybe plus seven. harmony I want to go for that's not presenting itself let's see Yeah, I do a similar thing uh, with my detune when I automate it. I just always use a macro in between. I never want to use just the sound because otherwise you run into... Um, I run in, you run into that 
issue of like you have to change the entire automation Yeah, something like that. I don't know if that's the right sound to do it on, but I think it would be a really nice balance to your main one. Uh, the other one is kind of... Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a little bit more interesting than just playing the same note a third time. It's a harmony of the same note. Let's go ahead and hear this in the mix now. sound but it's I think it could be improved this guy is really like low endy I would try to reduce that Yeah, this reminds me of uh, Interstellar soundtrack. On this bass low, let me see what you've got going on here. I'm afraid you don't have enough like mids here. Let me try like just like a basic saw wave on this. And on on envelope one, I want to make the release a little bit longer because this is the um, this is your amplitude. I don't want it to cut so quickly. distortion a little bit sounds pretty cool um, let's hear that with the rest of the track now Tweaking your side chain just a little bit. We 
it's a little bit heavier now and i think it's going to work a lot better with the rest of your uh stuff that's kind of cutting more of it i'm just going to put this on the group instead of putting on each individual channel it's often easier to handle when you're side chaining a group than individual channels like this so yeah, let's hear how this sounds with the kick now I still think your kick's a little quiet, but I think everything's a bit loud now relative. Let's turn everything down, except for the kick. Let's say like a few decibels, yeah. Be a bit too loud. Somebody in the chat said, I feel like the synths are a little too loud relative to the kick. Yeah, that's what I just did. Um, yeah, just a little bit too loud. I feel like that kick may need changed. Um, I think there's a good core of kick here. Kick's a bit long. It's got some like that's got some like reverb or something on it. I'm just gonna shorten it. Like that. And I want this guy to be like a, a top kick and you have your low kick at the bottom. Let's see what key we're in here. E? Let's find uh, the melodic element. That's whatever the key is. Yep, E. Cool. Kicks in key. Sounds good. Sound it inverted or something? Oh, your scale is at negative. Interesting. Where's the where's macros? It's on a normal EQ and there, not one that's con connected to the macros right now. Try that again. Uh, kick low. I just want to put a normal EQ. Come on, let me do it. There it is. <laughs> I just want to do this. Give it a bump here. Give it a cut here. And then we can layer the two. Now the side chain compressor, I'm not sure if we need that. that is probably going to help. Guys, how do you get the fade out on automation? Uh, you press the A key and you turn automation off and then you can fade clips in and out. You, can, you can't do a fade in the, uh, in the uh, automation window. Okay, so we have our kick. Where is the second one? Okay, that's our 606. This is our this is our sample. So let's lose the EQ right now. And let's try to just carve it in. So we don't want all of that low end. We want more of that like mid. Let's 
turn our low down and our high down a little bit. And turn this guy up. Got a little bit more bite now. We can EQ the kick group to kind of strengthen that, what we just did in each individual channel. And I, I will almost never group my kick with my rest of my drums just because it's such a different instrument. It's almost like part of the bass. Oh, you mean within the, there's mixer, but no fade out thingy. On this thing, you do one shot and then you could do fade out. You can't do it in classic mode. Um, I'm just gonna shorten up your 606 a little bit. And maybe this guy too. There's our mids. Coming in a little bit hot right now, but I think that's, that's okay. Let's turn it down here. Like I was describing earlier, an EQ curve is just an EQ curve. The volume relative to the curve is um, uh, irrelevant. Uh, it's just how much volume you're pushing up. What's what what matters is the curve itself. We're kind of pushing over zero in a few points here. That's why it's clipping a little bit off the chain. If I have this at zero, um, but if I set this to negative two or whatever, negative three, uh, we lose that because we've only boosted three here. That's a little bit better in the kick for sure. And then on our snare, I think I'm going to do a similar thing. I want to shorten that a bit. like these really long drums and then on our snare group I'm just gonna put a EQ with a high boost so it crunches through a little bit more it's a little bit dull clap now which is what I want I think those drums are sounding a lot better now okay and then um, percussion sounds pretty good same thing on this guy though I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a high boost I'll hear that with the rest of the instruments I still think your low end needs a little bit more. Like you should probably do like a, um, a legato sub or something under there, like a mm, 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 um, so that you can really fill out this arrangement. Like if I was to just duplicate this really quick um, and try uh, to say, do this and this and Um, 
and did a legato and then went to our synth and just initialized it and just held out a note like something like this I don't know down to now the bass is on the group we don't have to deal with it and yeah we just have this held through and I think it fills it out nicely um, go ahead and copy this over here yeah there we go fills out the bottom end. Open it a bit more, maybe. Wish that that didn't do that every time. This is why I never like to use. Um, oops, this is why I don't like to use a direct automation on the synth because now I can't change it without dealing with this automation stuff, which is a big workflow hindrance. Um, it's going to delete everything. Uh, let me just clear it. Yep, yeah, and then we'll do actually that. Just delete everything. Uh, there we go. Nice respace. Sounds good. See how it fills in nicely now? I would almost dare to say destroy the, the the snare clap a little bit more even, sidechain it to our kick so that it's really short, uh, dead mouse style. Uh, it would be really nice. Essentially, what we're doing is we're, um, we're essentially uh, transient shaping it. Lots of cool stuff in there, dude. Um, I think I I think I added enough uh, to this guy, and um, those are some things that I would adjust in this track. I think my main issues are sound design. Um, there's a lot of like it doesn't sound uh, finished sound design, um, and I think we alleviated some of that. I think the drums sound better together now. Um, it just needed like a mid layer. 
and it needed a little bit of EQ help. Um, and I think that helps. We tried the harmony on that the top melody. I don't know if you like that, but um, I think it's a cool, um, you know, writing idea. It, it's up to you, though, obviously. And um, yeah, I, I, I really like this project file. I think it's one of the best ones you've sent in so far. Um, and yeah, guys, with that, I think that is our closing project. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you guys want to submit next month, again, make sure to check out my Patreon page. Uh, $10 pledges and above can get access to these streams. And you can submit in your projects. They're first come, first serve, basically. I always get a bunch. Um, usually we manage to get to all of them, but sometimes I get like a lot of submissions. Um, but yeah, you can go and check it out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Julian Gray. If you're interested in checking out... Um, streams like this or if you're just interested in uh, supporting the channel uh, either way it helps up the channel a lot um, helps me do this for you guys so I don't have to you know be doing some other work to pay the bills and um, yeah I really appreciate all of your support and pledges and thank you for submitting today I hope you guys stay creative in uh, this time of quarantine and uncertainty in the world i think creativity and us artists are really is what keeping is what keeping is what is keeping society together and uh, people really rely on our creativity and our passion to get them through this time where they have nothing else to focus on except for art that they love so keep staying creative guys and work on some music and work on some art in any form that you partake in during this time and i hope you guys enjoyed this stream if you did give it a like if you didn't give it a dislike let me know why in the comment section below and i guess i will talk to you um in the next stream and um that'll be next month i'm, I'm actually going i'm planning on doing a stream tomorrow guys for the uh write a song from start to finish uh, i'm gonna try to finish that track tomorrow so if you guys want to tune into that um the last episode is available on the channel now essentially we're writing a song from start to finish that i'm going to release actually like on a label um on live stream entirely so you can go and check that out on the previous video which is like a five hour live stream where i write a song from the beginning to like halfway done um i'm planning on doing that tomorrow and um yeah I'll, i i hope to see you guys uh in the next one um talk to you soon and stay safe everyone Bye bye